now that we've got our basic transparency and we've got our blending, next we are going to add in a texture to use as a distortion map for our transparent pixels, moving them and warping them to give the kind of impression of refraction. And so, first of all, what we're gonna do is we're going to grab this small waves, and this is just a, uh, a texture that came with Amplify, and we can just drag it right into the editor and it will make a node for it. And we're gonna call this distortion map. And we can zoom out if we want to, to see the whole graph. I'm gonna keep it zoomed in just so it's a little easier to see. Um, and what we wanna do is we want to add this distortion to our image by inserting an add node between grabbing the screen position, which we're gonna add in a second, and our color. So let's add in a, if we type grab, we're gonna add in a grab screen position. So what this is gonna do is get us a position in screen space that we can then use to move around the pixels in our grabbed screen texture, right? So we're gonna add, we're gonna, to move those pixels around, we're gonna use this distortion map. So we're gonna right click and add in an add node. And what we're gonna do is we are going to connect the XYZ output from grab screen position and from our distortion map and then connect that to grab screen zero. And now, if we apply the changes and preview, we can see we've got this kind of modeled shimmery effect, right? So we've got actually kind of the core of the effect, but we don't yet have the level of control or quite the kind of full polish on it that we want. But basically that's what this effect is doing, right? Grabbing the pixels behind the arm and then moving them around based on our distortion map, right? So we're grabbing the screen position, adding some basically noise to it, um, which is really the role of this texture, right? And then moving around those pixels uh, to give us this kind of distorted image. So the one thing that we wanna be able to do is to control the amount of distortion that we're adding here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in a multiply node. And we're gonna run the output of the distortion map through the multiply node into the add node. Now notice when I reconnect this, right, it deletes the original connection. We can have multiple output connections from a node, but only a single input, right? So if we replace the input connection, it's gonna get rid of the previous existing connection. Okay, so we're gonna multiply, we need something to multiply by, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in a float. And this float is gonna to connect to the other input of the multiply node, and it is also going to be a property. And so we're gonna call this uh, what should we call this? This will be distortion scale. And we'll set a minimum of zero, which will be no distortion, and a maximum of one, which will be the full distortion from the map. And this is a property, right? So it's gonna be visible in the material, and then we're gonna update. And now we can adjust how much distortion is being added, right? So I think a kind of a lower amount, even like down here, looks nice, right? So it's kind of subtle. It's not like so crazy noisy. Um, but we're gonna do, we're gonna go a little further. But that is kind of the basics, right? So we're adding in the distortion. We add in a property to scale it. Uh, and we're using that to manipulate the position of the pixels uh, that are being rendered. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the rippling movement of our effect.
Hattori Seed asks, I have the asset, but I don't know much about shaders. Where's the best starting point to learn how to make different kinds of shaders? Here's the thing, right? Just because we're working in a visual shader tool, it doesn't change the underlying way that the shaders work. So any of the existing shader reference material or tutorials or um, guides and stuff, of which there are many uh, online, will allow you to understand what's possible in the shader, like this idea of grabbing the screen color and grabbing the screen position and moving them, right? These are things you could do in a text-based shader. In a text-based shader, they're not unique to Amplify Shader Editor. Um, so basically what I would say is figure out what text-based shader techniques you're trying to achieve, and then you can figure out how to do them in a graphical way. Um, there's a nice YouTube channel that I came across while doing research for this called it's making stuff look good in unity. And he does some nice shader tutorials that are kind of fun, uh, video tutorials. Um, those are probably a good place to start. Alan Zucconi also has some great shader tutorials and we will be doing an hour long starting from scratch text-based shader coding, uh, example, or shader coding training uh, in about a month in June, on June 21st. So feel free to come back for that.